Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. It's been a hot minute since we've gone through and fully detailed all of the best settings here within Warzone. We've seen a lot of things change over the past couple of seasons, new settings added in, other things evolve. And so today I wanted to go through and break down everything you need to be running for your settings, whether you're on PC or console. We're talking graphic settings, controller, audio, everything like that the first super important thing i want to point out because whenever i do talk settings there's always some confusion in order to make sure you have all of the full options for your settings here when you go in you have to make sure you are in the war zone menu i see a lot of players going on to just like the general main menu here and going into your settings when you do that certain things won't show up or if you go over into multiplayer certain things won't show up so make sure you are in the actual Warzone menus. Oftentimes, I'd recommend just going into like a random playlist as well, just to be sure that everything's going to show up and then go through and open up your settings here to make sure everything is going to fully be available and fully show up. But first things first, you start off in the keyboard and mouse section. And quite frankly, nearly everything here is personal preference. Keybinds are an individual thing. There's no real best keybinds that are like universal. Depends on what you're comfortable with, how you sit, how you angle your, you know, keyboard and everything. And same deal with mouse sensitivity, what DPI you use, what sensitivity you're comfortable with in games. So for the most part, mouse and keyboard is incredibly, incredibly personal, and there's no true best settings universally for that stuff. You get into the rest of this though, and it's a lot more, uh, you know, statistically or objectively, this is better than that. So as we dive into the controller settings here, while yes, obviously your in-game settings are super important, so is the controller you are using. What I've been using for some time now and absolutely loving is the Thrustmaster eSwap X2, which just so happens to be the sponsor of today's video. This controller quite literally has it all. It's got the back buttons here, so you can easily remap whatever you need with these buttons. You never have to take your hands off the precision sticks, because you can easily just tap these buttons on the back and get all the inputs you need for your gameplay. The trigger locks also mean you can optimize your trigger presses for faster inputs on the fly. And for Call of Duty, obviously being able to spam your triggers as fast as you can, especially for semi-auto weapons and certain builds like that is super important. You can even adjust the layout of the controller as well, the type of sticks and the colorways you're using and just a few simple steps for the ultimate customization. And on top of that, the Thrustmapper X software allows you to take customization another step further with fine tuning for all your input remapping, stick and trigger sensitivities, and even more. So if you're interested in picking up a Thrustmaster eSwap X2 controller, you can check out the link down in the description below, and you can even throw in code immortal to help support the channel even more. But once again, huge thank you to Thrustmaster for sponsoring today's video. A lot of key things to note. First things first with your button layout. The number one thing I'd recommend, unless there is a button layout preset that perfectly changes what you want, which for me personally is tactical, I can just use the back button on my controller and I'm good to go. And I can use my slide cancel off my thumbstick like that. I like the feel of that. But if there's something in specific you absolutely want to change you can just custom map it here you can change your keybinds on your controller to do whatever so i'd recommend doing that first unless there is a specific layout that uh just works perfectly for you bumper ping and flipping i turn off there stick layout i keep on default vibration i never want that on because i don't want my controller shaking if i'm trying to be super accurate in game dead zone inputs i always talk about this this is super important to actually keep up to date because stick drift can naturally happen over time so basically the way to test this is when you turn this on and you move your sticks around and then you stop you want to make sure this comes back to zero if this is coming back to two percent or three percent or whatever then you need to go through and you need to up your left stick or your right stick min respectively also while you're in here turning left stick max down to 50 to 60 is going to make it so you can abuse rotational aim assist a little bit more because when you turn this on it's going to basically make it so that you don't have to move your left stick as much to activate that uh you know input and then rotational aim assist is going to be activated the second you have any kind of input going on with your left stick and you're looking into like an aim assist bubble on an enemy so that's kind of a way to make that even more overpowered we then jump over to the aiming stuff i'm currently on an 87 staggered sensitivity we're looking around a lot more left to right in this game than we are up and down so i like to have that a tad bit faster sensitivity multipliers i don't change anything here specifically same deal with vertical axis tack stance multiplier aim response curve type you can go in depth more on the slope but i just basically leave it at dynamic because i'm comfortable with this only reason you'd want to adjust the slope here is to get a more refined feel, but I don't feel like it's super necessary in a lot of cases, just because it's something you're going to have to get used to again. Uh, so I just leave that at one. Dynamic is still the snappiest and I guess most responsive aim curve type. And this is what you'll see the vast majority of pro players and top tier players uh, running for that. 
sensitivity multiplier and focus I keep on one the ADS transition going from your base sensitivity into your ADS sensitivities I do keep on instant so that the second I'm ADS I'm gonna be in my custom sensitivities that I have per zoom so all my low zoom scopes like iron sights red dots stuff like that I actually bump all the way down to 0.8 so I can be more accurate with those essentially and then I gradually increase this over time if you want to type in a specific value like 0.83 you have to plug in a keyboard and then type it in that way otherwise you'll be stuck with just increments of five if you're adjusting it on controller but I just increase those as you get higher and higher to the sniper scopes this is a super important thing for me because I notice I am absolutely way more accurate when I have this customized per zoom uh, because obviously the more zoomed in you are the uh, slower it's going to be as you're going left to right so having that just on one universal setting can really limit you if you're actively using different style of scopes uh, target aim assist we obviously want that on I've actually switched over to default for my aim assist type from black ops I I'm not going to sit here and say I notice a huge difference between the two I will say I feel like my rotational aim assist is maybe a little bit more uh sticky in some cases I guess with default but I cannot pinpoint an exact gunfight where I'm like hey if I had black ops there I wouldn't have felt that or if I had default there I would have so I don't think there's a huge difference but default I think is where more players more uh you know pros and whatnot are uh, are sitting right now and it works I can confirm that ADS aim assist doesn't matter that's a campaign only thing and then I have a assist on third person correction type motion sensor behavior or gyro aiming I do keep this on off if this is something you're interested in you already have your research done on this this is not something a casual player is really going to take advantage of now for gameplay things here we actually talked a lot about these recently but uh overall I really feel like I've uh narrowed down my absolute best settings for this so obviously I'm using auto attack sprint for the uh best movement there slide maintain sprints I have this on on so I can have those smooth slide cancels don't want to auto move forward if you're not playing with ATS single tap sprint is going to be the way to go there grounded mantle airborne automatic mantle and then ground mantle and hang I all keep on off so I will never randomly mantle something I'm not trying to mantle unfortunately ledge hanging in this game just wants to happen at all times I wish there was an option to completely turn that off but uh, I'm not randomly mantling in gunfights and that's a pro for me slide only for my behavior here uh, I find no real situation where the diving is going to be super super impactful some players do like to play hybrid though so they can have both and I think that's a good setting too if you care about diving a lot uh plunging underwater keep on free parachute automatic behavior definitely have this on off because you don't want your parachute to automatically open for you you want to be able to get as close to the ground as you possibly can before you manually pull your chute so you can get to the loot faster you'll never get blocked by a random parachute or anything like that Sprinting door bash on on so you can get through doors easier mantle only for the ledge climb behavior and then gas mask activation I keep on manual they said there was going to be a semi option for this where it would actually uh automatically go on when you're in the gas but then you'd have to manually take it off afterwards don't know what happened to that but I just manually put it on and manually take it off I think that's the best way to go about it there uh, you'll never be randomly interrupted in the middle of your gameplay ADS behavior keep on hold uh change zoom I keep on my sprint or my focus button there uh equipment hold very standard there ADS plus melee is my weapon mount activation but that's more of a preference one short exit delay on the animation I don't think that has any real impact though tax stance I always keep on something that I'm never going to accidentally press so for me that's ADS and down uh, I wouldn't do ADS and sprint or ADS and melee because you might accidentally turn it on there if you have certain button layouts on of course uh tax stance behaviors on toggle for me prioritize interact obviously so I I can just single tap to pick things up or open doors or open chests I don't have to stop and hold things that just kind of ruins the fluidity of your gameplay apply all on armor because I can cancel that whenever by sprinting or by YYing or anything like that stick swap is off directional buttons for my backpack control I uh, don't want my weapons automatically switching when they run out of ammo I like to be in control of everything here that's kind of the main end goal if you will c4 detonation this one's become more important as of late because c4 has become more important one by one doesn't actually always work but most of the times it does and that allows you to individually detonate your c4 so you don't necessarily have to throw that second one if you get a knock or you can if you want to and get that finisher maybe knock another uh enemy nearby manual fire behavior I have on press and then for me akimbo uh behavior I like to have on independent just because but if you want to pair this it's a little bit more efficient it's one trigger click to shoot both guns 
just a matter of preference there and then vehicle look here don't really change anything from the default and then same deal with the overlay behaviors that's not all that important by the ways we are going through all the settings here today if you enjoy the video if you find it helpful a like rating is always really appreciated and if you're new to the channel or you simply have not subscribed yet every single day i got you covered with news updates patch notes meta breakdowns everything going on in cod is right here so feel free to hit that subscribe button to guarantee you are always up to date now getting into your graphic settings here obviously a lot here is going to be more expanded upon if you're on pc there's a lot of specific things you can change there as opposed to console we'll be covering it all here but i do want to preface graphic settings again there is rarely a universal this is the best this is the best this is the best because a lot of it's going to depend on what your target fps is if you want to always get 100 fps or if you're trying to push 240 or whatever uh you're going to want to obviously turn things to low for a higher fps or if you want your game to look better you turn it up it's going to look pretty but you're going to have worse frames it's kind of just the standard way it always has been a few things here you always want to be in full screen exclusive i notice i get way better frames when i am in full screen obviously set to your uh screen refresh rate i play in 1440p 240 hertz there uh brightness i always adjust a little bit but that's more dependence on the brightness of the room you're playing in or you know the brightness of your monitor or anything like that uh low latency this is going to be super important basically the way to test this is that if your gpu bound you want to have it on one versus if your cpu bound you want to have it on the other personally i am uh, i'm about even on both of them so i go for just on but you know if your gpu is uh you know where your clock time is going to be higher you turn it on to on plus boost or whatever the case is there so you want to test that by turning on your cpu time and your gpu time loading into a game and seeing which one is the higher number and then changing that accordingly there but for me again it's just on uh eco mode i have off so it says it's custom and then vsync don't want that on that has input delay obviously you don't want that native resolution here so i'm never going to have any weird like uh you know texture glitches or anything because it's trying to change the resolution focus mode i have on zero and then hdr i do have on off now for quality this is where a lot of it just comes down to what is your pc capable of of course console doesn't really have as many options here so not super relevant for them but if you're using you know like me for instance a 13900k and a 4090 you could technically turn a lot of this on high and still have decent frames i personally play to max out at 240 i want the best frames uh but if you're using you know a 30 series card or an amd card or whatever else or you know uh a different stuff there it's really dependent on what your pc can handle so i do have a custom preset obviously i'm playing in 1440p i like using fidelity cast over everything here uh, obviously there are some other good ones you could use image scaling you could use uh fsr1 depending on your specs of course or dlss if you're upscaling to 2k or to 4k in certain scenarios but for me i like the clarity that fidelity cast offers i think the frames are good with this so for my personal build here and my specs it works well i up that to 90 so things are pretty sharp and i like the overall visuals there obviously don't want to play with ray tracing that's going to kill your frames vram target i keep on 80 variable rate shading i keep on and then dlss frame generation i do have off don't really love the look of the game when the frame generation is on and i i notice like really consistent frames when i do have variable rate shading on there so uh, i don't notice any significant like drops or uh, spikes in certain cases that aren't just the game being unstable rather than my settings not being efficient enough then we get into details and textures again like i said this is a lot of the answer here do you want better frames okay turn it lower do you want a better looking game turn it higher and of course it's going to be the inverse there if you're uh, getting better frames your game's going to look worse if the game looks pretty it'll be worse frames so texture res i keep on normal mainly for the quality here i want the game to look good for you guys in the videos but i also want good frames i keep on high on the texture filter depth of field you don't want that blur so absolutely turn that off detail quality i keep on normal it's pretty enough but it doesn't kill my frames particle res i keep on low that's not important but it actually does impact your frames a lot which is kind of weird bullet impacts i like on on i like to see if there's been shots in certain directions of course persistent effects off shader quality low i didn't notice a huge difference outside of like water reflections and stuff which is not going to give me any competitive edge in fact it's going to make it harder to see things like with there are puddles or different water or stuff on the map there so low is actually sort of a competitive advantage and it gives you better frames texture streaming you do not want that on so turn that off it's going to make your frames worse and uh just not ideal whatsoever and then low streaming quality there even though it's off not super important right uh shadow quality normal shadows are important but not super important of course screen space shadows the reflections and whatnot here not super important it makes your game look a little bit cooler but off is better frames of course ambient occlusion same deal off there screen space reflections absolutely turn this off no matter what it's going to make it easier to see enemies that are in water or behind glass and windows and stuff 
you don't want that on that's going to block your view in some cases static reflection quality i also keep on low tessellation i've got off volumetric quality low uh deferred physics quality is off grid volumes is off water quality is off that's all for the purpose of better frames and quite frankly the game looks just fine with all that being low or off in general we then go over to view obviously console is going to have a lot of these i play on max 120 the general like preferred fov is anywhere between like 95 and 110 so you can always adjust that as you need that's more of a preference thing you do want to run affected so you have lower visual recoil i like my weapon field of view being wide so i feel like i can just see more there without the weapon blocking anything and i got wide fov and max fov for third person and vehicle please turn off pretty much everything in camera you don't want any motion blur that's terrible from a competitive standpoint same deal with film grain you don't want screen shake either so turn that to least for third and first person transition i just keep on third person ads game perspective uh inverted flashbang just a matter of preference if you want it to not be all bright white you can turn it to dark but then i think my game crashes when my screen just goes black because i get flashed so i gotta have it on the bright white unfortunately parachute camera i keep on first person so those are all the graphic settings like i said a lot of just preference and uh you know pc specific stuff there unfortunately getting into audio here for me this is very straightforward i don't do any audio tuning or anything like that as good as arts audio is it's not for me i like to have things a little bit more uh basic and i use flex as a perk and while it's a crutch i can hear footstep audio pretty consistently so for me uh with my, the way that my setup is i have a very intricate audio setup that the majority of you won't i'm going from uh an actual preamp into my go xlr mixer for streaming and recording into my dt 1990 pro headset and for me pc speakers what i get the best audio feedback from with footsteps and directional audio and everything some players are going to love home theater or bass boost or something and it's really going to be dependent on what your audio setup is like there uh, i do keep on a default system device and stereo speaker uh master game volume and my different volumes here really is dependent on how loud you want things to be because i adjust things so much elsewhere with the preamp and my mixer i have it on just 22 but all you really care about here from a competitive standpoint is these volumes so music and gameplay is not going to give you any good information it's just going to muddy up your audio basically it's going to block you from hearing footsteps or other stuff so turn that to zero Dialogue's important because it's going to be enemy in the AO and all the stuff like that. You want to have that noticeable. Effects is the most important. That's gunfire, footsteps, glass, splashes, everything like that. Make sure that's the highest. And then if you want cinematic music, go for it. If you want war tracks, go for it. I don't care about either of those all that much. If you want voice chat on, you can turn that to a certain thing too. And of course, you can turn all that on if you want it on uh, in game microphone stuff here doesn't really matter whatsoever subtitles you can have on if you want uh sometimes you might miss something uh with the audio but then see it on your screen it could always be important there but that's just a matter of preference and then functionality mono audio you do not want that on reduce tinnitus sound you do want on this is going to reduce any effects of ringing in game from a flash or a stun or something like that so i think that's pretty important it's fun to have war tracks as a passenger also fun to listen to music in a juggernaut uh, i like the classic hit marker you could change that to modern warfare or none if you wanted to uh then that concludes all the audio settings lastly here with interface there's a handful of things here that are actually really really useful subtitles again all preference based color customization is a really important one because this is viable on console especially helpful on console where you don't have all the color customization that like nvidia control panel might offer right so i do use a custom hud palette here i actually change all the neutral colors to something very bright in my case it's purple so i can see those neutral things a little bit easier than it just being white and potentially blending into the background there more importantly color filter changing this to filter 2 is just going to make your game more saturated and more vibrant it's going to make things stand out a little bit more and then when you put the filter target on both then up these to whatever value you want for your monitor or your screen uh it's going to make it so that everything in the game just looks better it's not going to look as washed out or uh you know gray and brown and green it's going to make reds pop and all these different colors pop a lot more and on console especially i think make the game look way better but even for my setup here on pc i noticed a significant difference in visual quality so super important to turn that on that's one of the best settings i can recommend just across the board honestly mini map shape please keep that on square it's going to show you more for your mini map that's obviously super important i like the rotation on it's easier to uh make call outs with that you want the compass on of course crosshairs turning on is also super important with that center dot it's just way better for aiming you turn this on you're going to be able to center even when you don't have crosshairs so that when you do ads it'll always be where that center dot was and it's going to help out a ton with accuracy then you can adjust that size to whatever you want there 
Uh, I do want my hit markers on, of course. Damage-based hit markers doesn't matter for Warzone. Player names, you can have that whatever you want. Same deal with text chat, vehicle prompts. That stuff doesn't really matter. And there's no stamina bar in Warzone, so that doesn't matter either. For telemetry, I think the most important thing is having your frames, making sure the game's not stuttering or lagging or anything. Your latency, so your ping to the server. And then if there's any packet loss. Uh, as mentioned, if you're looking to test your stuff with, uh, you know, uh, the boost and whatnot, you want to have your GPU time on or your CPU time on. You can turn these other things on if you want, but those top three are definitely the most important there. And then you can change the size if you want there too. Uh, then everything else is pretty much just a matter of preference here. If you want this stuff on or off, go for it. Doesn't really matter. And then accounts and network is all individual stuff. So that being said, those are all of the best settings to be running in Warzone right now. Some things that we've changed over the course of time or learned more about uh, as well. Hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, do me a favor, drop a like. And if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button on your way out. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy. Have an awesome rest of your day. And I'll catch you later. Peace out.